What's up guys, welcome back to Valheim. In the last video I showed you around my Black Forest base and gave some, you know, general tips and building ideas for people to use in their own builds. I got asked a lot about how to just build in general, how to do certain things, how to get started, or people saying all their starting builds look like sheds so i figured i'd show you how to turn your shed into something nice and comfortable and have the perfect home for your journey in valheim to get started so the first thing you're going to want to do is when you find where you want to start your build flatten out the ground using the leveling tool with the hoe you want to give yourself a nice flat area to start with just makes things easier and looks better and the way this works is what you're standing on is what the hoe will try and level the ground to so if it's slightly below you where you're looking at it will bring it up to where your character's standing if it's slightly above you it will try and bring it down to where your character's standing obviously if it's too big one way or the other then you'll have to either use the raise ground option with the hoe or you will have to use a pickaxe um, if it's too high to knock the ground down but for the most part if it's not too much one way or the other the level ground tool will make things nice and level and you should make it flat enough to be able to place a floor piece wherever with no mud coming through it once I've got the ground how I want it, I start putting the floor pieces down. Just to sort of work out what I want, I just lay out the floor plan kind of thing. And then I'll start putting the walls up. The walls in Valheim have two sort of textures. They have an outside and an inside, I guess. I don't know which way around they're really meant to go, but it's completely up to you. I like to have it so the beams of the wall are on the inside and have a flat outside because I like to... You know, like you might have seen in the other video, add some detailing, some decoration to the outside to break up the boring flat wood. And um, I always find if I have the beams to the outside when I do that, it can make it look not so good. So I like to have the beams to the inside personally, but it's completely up to you. So for this beginner house build, um, I'm making it four walls long by three walls wide and two walls high before we'll get to the roof. And the way I like to do things on Valheim so far is to just build the shell. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about how boring and how shed-like it might look. Just get the walls up, get the roof on, get the floor in. And once we've got the shell of the building, we can start making it look cool. And again, you don't have to do this all in one go. Some of the things, for decoration at least, you might not unlock straight away. So you're going to have to go adventuring, you're going to have to find things to unlock. So you don't have to do this right away, but what you do need to do is get the shell up, of course, because that's going to be your shelter, it's going to allow you to use your workbench, it's going to allow you to have a fire that's protected from the weather, and obviously a bed to sleep at night. So that's the main thing. Get the walls up, get the roof on, get protected. For the roof, you have two options really, the 45 degree and 26 degree pitch for your roof. And whichever one you choose for the particular line of roofing you'll use, you're going to have to make sure you use the right sloped wall on the end of it to cap it off. So if you're using a 45 degree roof, you need to use a 45 degree sloped wall to fill the gap at the end so the other thing with the reefs is you might end up with a gap like this if you use a odd number for the width so this was a three wide hut so in the middle there's going to be a gap you can't use the normal roof pieces to you know make the pinnacle you have to use a reef ridge now Obviously, I'm using a 45 degree roof, so I'm going to use the 45 degree ridge. But you could use the 26 degree and it'll look fine. And you can mix and match the degrees if you want. You could start with a 26 degree um, roof at the edge of your building. And then as you go further up your roof, turn it into a 45 degree to give it a different kind of sloped look and it does look pretty cool actually it's good to mix and match also in the last video just quickly i did get asked how i get on top of my roof to build things when i'm playing on my normal game and that is using the ladders i just build ladders i use the one by one floor tiles as stepping stones on the roof so i don't slip down it all the time and when i'm finished i just delete them from the build once you've got your roof pinnacle finished at the ends, at the gable ends if you want, you're going to end up with 
a gap at the top. Now you can fill it in different ways. You could put a half all up there and cover it completely. Although I personally don't think that looks very good. Or you can use these cross sections. Um, they still leave a little gap. I think it looks kind of cool. You can just play around with what you think looks best to um, fill them in. So now you've got all this done, if you're following along with the video, you'll end up with, like people said in the comment of the last video, a basic shed. This will just be a hollow wooden shed. But this is how you now make this look like, you know, your own house. You put your own twists on it, customise it, decorate it, and it will no longer look like a shed. So the first thing you can do is stick some windows in so you can pop out parts of the wall where you want a window like that. I took out the two walls in the middle and then just surround the edges with logs. You can play around with different looks. I was seeing here whether I wanted a pillar in the middle or just leave it as one big window, which eventually I think I leave it as one big window. But um, yeah, this is where all the decoration starts that will give your build a unique look. You will unlock the logs um, once you chop down a tree in the black forest and get core wood. You need to find core wood and that will give you the logs. Now you can get this really early, you just need to find the black forest which no doubt will not be far from where you spawn. To cut it down though you are going to need a flint axe I believe and to get a flint axe you're going to need to look for flint stones along the coastline or along rivers. Um, and yeah, you can make a flint axe once you've done that and once you've got the flint axe you can get core wood and core wood is what we're using here for the logs. So another thing you can do which I got from the comments in my last video from Friendly Voice, a so thanks that comment, a really interesting idea of using iron gates in your windows. I had showcased in the previous video of building tips and ideas using fences to fill your windows you can use an iron gate as well. It's about a wall and a half tall, and if you do it like this, where I've taken out one wall and using them, the bottom half of the gate does sit in the bottom walls below it, and it is hidden. It doesn't stick out the front or the back of the wall. It just sits in there nice and snug, and um, works really well. And you can also still surround the edge of the window with the log beams, which is something I really like doing. And um, yeah, it looks really really nice a massive shout out to friendly voice for that and if you've got any ideas suggestions little tricks you like to use then feel free to leave a comment down below as well for other people including myself and i will try them out as well and maybe they'll appear in the video in the future too and uh why not give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button now another window type i showcased in the previous video for building tips and ideas was using the fences in your windows to fill the hole instead of having an open window you can use a fence and I said in there it snaps. What I meant was you have to like butt it up against the wall. So line it up how you want it. I try to get one of each pole each side of the wall, if that makes sense. There's a pole of the upright each side of the wall and get it butted up right against the end wall. And then you end up with a cross hatch in the middle and it sits in there perfectly. And then you end up with it like this. And then just again with my favorite object in the game, the logs. <laughs> just surround the window and it encases it and just makes it all look like it's all sealed in there and it doesn't really look like a fence anymore. I also mentioned in that same video breaking up the outside wall and making it so it's less boring and instead of just having a plain wooden wall you can add in the beams to break up the boring wooden face just you know, spin them around how you want them, use the diagonal pieces, the different degreed pieces, use the straight horizontal vertical pieces, whatever you want, add as many or as little as you like and just sticking a few in here and there will stop it looking as boring. And again, put logs everywhere, why not? Everyone loves a log. <laughs> The best way to find a look you like for your builds is just to keep playing around with it. Valheim's great because it refunds anything you delete. So if you put something you don't like and then you demolish it, you get all the materials back. So just play around with things, see what you like. I sort of like this, but I wasn't sure, so I went ahead and deleted it all. And then as I removed things, I just stuck different things back in and just carried on playing around with it until I was happy. 
And that's all you've got to do. You can just keep adding or taking things away as much as you like until you've got something you're happy with. And adding anything to a normal boring wooden structure is going to make it look a lot nicer and a lot more creative anyway. So another thing I found I could do with the fences was just simply snap them to a wall anyway. They didn't have to be in a window, they didn't have to be on the floor or anything like that. You could just snap them directly to the wall. So I played around with this here and I was actually pretty happy with it. So yeah, definitely experiment with this. You could probably make some funky patterns on your walls, in your great halls, etc. And um, yeah, this fence is turning out to be a really diverse building piece. So let's talk interiors. Now, first thing we're going to want inside, because that way we can work around it, is a fire. So decide where you want it. I'm going to put this one at the end of the building. And you can now no longer put fires on the logs. People kept asking me how I was getting my fires on the logs in the last video. Well, on the 17th of February, they patched the game and one of the things in the patch was, or it was a quick fix, I'm not too sure, but anyway, they updated it and you can no longer place fires on logs anymore, as you can see here, which is unfortunate, but it makes sense. Why would you be able to put fires on logs but not on a wood floor? So you do have to put it directly on a floor now, so just remove a floor piece from wherever you decide you want the fire. Um, I tried to make it a little bit higher here but it didn't really work so I just leveled it back out again. But put your fire on the floor where you want it and then you can work around it from there. So something you can do nice and simple to make a nice little fireplace once you've removed the floor and put your fire down is just whip some logs around the edge. Yes, I know, I'm obsessed with the logs, I can't help it. They're so good, they're almost as good as the fence pieces. So just put some logs around the edge and you will have a nice little fire pit to look at in your hut. And again, this will give us, you know, the starting point for the interior to work around. Obviously, once you've got your fire in, you can put some cooking racks on it. Now, I normally use one. I never considered adding extras, but you can definitely put two on, as you see here. But I've also been told you can fit three um, racks over a fire, which is pretty cool. Again, I didn't try that here. I like the look of the two, so that's what I did. But you can play with this as you like. I just thought I'd demonstrate that you can do it. And it also looks pretty cool on our logged fireplace. Now we've got the fireplace down, we can start placing other things. Most importantly, the workbench and bed. The workbench has to be under roof, in cover, out of the weather, for you to be able to access it and be able to craft the items that it allows you to craft. So make sure you get your workbench in as soon as you can. And um, yeah, even if you just put the roof on and stick it in here, and then you can move it again later. But yeah, definitely want to get the workbench in and under cover. And decide where you want to place the bed, get some storage down. You can do what I've done here and just stick a few boxes around the edge, put a few shelves up using the one by one floor tiles. And then you can place the storage boxes on the top of them. You can also do the storage box stacking method where you just put a box against the wall and then put a one by one uh, floor tile on top of the storage box and then you can add a storage box on top of it. So to make the little start hut more advanced and if you've made it the same size as I'm doing here this will all fit. You might have unlocked the furniture by now, a table and chairs. If not just find fine wood. Again you're going to need a flint axe which we mentioned earlier in the video to get certain woods. So get yourself a flint axe, get some fine wood by chopping down a birch tree. That will unlock the furniture and the table this chair in particular not the stool make sure you use this chair with a deer rug a fire this will give you a comfort rating of eight a higher comfort rating which is displayed under your resting buff so you've got the resting with all the zeds at the top and then it says comfort level that will increase the length of your rested buff which means you will get the rested stat increases which is really really handy so if you build this build like i've done you will end up with that buff 
If you've unlocked tables and chairs, the other thing you will have is an item stand. The item stand is something you can hang items on, and you can put it on a wall and you can hang, like I said, items on it, but also trophies. So you can get a deer trophy, hang it on the wall, and you can obviously decorate your house with it. It looks really, really cool. I was seeing here if it increased comfort, it didn't seem to, and if I've missed anything out to do the comfort, and you know about it then please let me know but I believe this is everything you can do early game i.e. pre-iron I know I've got the iron gate but that was just an experiment but at the start of the game when you're in the meadows maybe just going into the black forest you should be able to at least get a comfort level 8 with a deer rug, a table in the chairs, a bed and a fire and now we'll just finish off with the chimney and the roof and a few finishing little touches. Again, to get up on your roof, just use temporary ladders. You can delete them later. Use the one by one floors as stepping stones so you don't slide down your roof. And um, I'm just using half walls here to finish off the chimney top. You don't really need to do this, but obviously it does look nice to have a chimney rather than just a hole in your roof. It was letting smoke out just fine with just a hole in it. And... Um, yeah, just use the half walls or whatever you like to finish your chimney. I think this looks pretty smart though. Just two half walls rather than the normal walls. But I guess you could just use a normal wall. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. That's what I like to do. And then if you don't like just a normal boring thatched roof. I say boring. Sometimes it looks nice with nothing on it. Sometimes it looks nice if you had the detail of the beams like in the previous video I did. So as you can see they just clip in. You just get them to the edge of each roof tile and they should just clip in and they can clip over each other as well so you don't have anything sticking out if you don't want them sticking out. And then just add logs to finish off wherever needed because we all love a log we've established this. <laughs> and there you go guys. A very basic but decorative starting house which will be super effective and if you build it like I've done it will give you a comfort rating of 8 which will give you a 15 minute rested buff every time you go inside it and um, yeah I'm really happy with this this is better than the starting hut I started with <laughs> but there you go there's how you turn your little shed into a perfect little house Again, you don't have to do this all right away. Like I said earlier, build the shell, put your bed and your workbench in it and a little bit of storage. Go out exploring, unlock things and add things as you go. Um, but yeah, you'll soon end up with a house rather than a shed and it will be effective and keep you safe. And, you know, this is a great starting place. So there you go. I hope it was helpful, guys. If you've got anything you'd like to add, then leave a comment down below, of course, as always. Thanks for the feedback and all the positivity of the previous video. I'm kind of mind blown, to be honest, with how successful that video was. And um, yeah, I'm happy to help. I'm glad people enjoyed it and took inspiration from it. And I hope this helps people in the future turn your shed into a happy home. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go guys plenty more to come in the future so hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell give the video a thumbs up and i'll catch you next time cheers